Hey, so some people have been asking me to explain exactly what a reference is, and that's a really good question to ask. If you're not a C++ programmer, um, the naming of this class is going to be completely lost on you. Um, so let me show you by example, okay? Here's a really simple game. I have these units, and when I left click, they all jump to where I clicked. I noticed that some of them are faster than others, so each of these units has different stats. And when I click a bunch of times, let's say in a square, you can see that they have a queue of tasks, and they will process each task on the queue. Okay, so that's pretty simple code. Here's how I wrote it. We have this, in the scene tree, this controller, and when he sees a click, he creates a new task. And if we look at task, it's this node, it's got a class name of task, so I can refer to it at the code, throughout the code, and it has an action and position. So the action is moved, the position is the global mouse position where I clicked, and then I say for every worker, queue that task. And you can see in the scene tree, we have these workers. And when we queue a task, it's just saying, go to your array of tasks, push it on the back, and then when the units are moving, they're just in their process method. They're saying, do I have tasks? If I do, is it a move task? If it's a move task, do the move action. And the move action is very simple, just global position, move toward um, the task position by the delta. And then why do they stop? Because you can see here, if the global mass position distance um, sorry, the global position distance to the task position is less than this little value, then you pop the task off the queue, and then you're done. So I hope that code is, is simple enough and you understand it. So what's the problem with this? Well, I'll show you. And you probably probably might know it if, if you were paying attention. So let's look at our monitors. And let's look at objects. We have 928 objects instance right now. Okay, and I'm gonna start clicking. So I click once, and now we have 929 objects. I click again, 930 objects. Again, oh, 931. And is that value gonna go down? Uh, it looks like no. So if you could imagine if the player plays this for an hour or you have thousands of messages going on, then maybe it's like a big multiplayer game or something, then these objects are just gonna go up and up and up and you're gonna run out of memory. So what's going on here? Well, we're not actually freeing those objects. So if we go to our, our task, right? Task is a node and you probably already know that you have to free a node sometimes. So let's go to our um, our the part of the code where we remove the task, okay? And it's going to be easy. We're just going to say task dot free, and that should free the node once we're done with it. Right? Problem solved. Okay. Let's watch it. So I'm going to click here. At, oh, what happened? Let's look at our errors. Get name, att oh, attempted get on a deleted object. So what happened there? Okay. So what's happening is that this guy here in the middle, he finished the task and then he deleted it. But these guys were still processing that task because here is the task. I created it and I gave it to all the workers. This guy finished it and deleted it, but these guys were still using it. And so now we got a crash. Okay, so how do I how do I work around this? Do I have to say some sort of um, weird function where okay, um, here what I should do is before I free the task, I should go upwards in the tree and ask all of the workers are they still using it? That could work, but it'd be really messy, right? And Right now, the game is pretty simple, but if the game got more complicated, you know, how would you track who has the task and who doesn't have the task? 
it'd be a nightmare. So is there a way that we can, we can not do this? Is there a way that the engine can automatically clean up the task for us? Yes. If we go to our task and we call it a reference. Now, let's go to our monitors. We have 928 objects. And now we have 929. Is it working? Aha, it went down back to 928, what we started with. Let's keep testing this. Let's do a square. We have 933 objects, 934. Okay, it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. And 929, back to the start. So that was an introduction to references by our little contrived example. And I want to stop and say, it might not have been obvious from what you saw, but when we make something um, a reference, like our task here, this means we can no longer add it onto the scene tree. Only nodes can go onto the scene tree. So the only way this task can be used is if you say, if our task new, um, you know, and create it, and then we just set this into variables of different scripts and stuff. So he cannot go onto the scene tree. And why this is useful um, is, well, obviously we saw tasks are useful because they can clean themselves up. I mean, references are useful because they clean themselves up. But you could imagine if this was some huge online game, you might have thousands and thousands of messages coming in and you don't want all that to be on the scene tree for no reason, right? So if you go to um, the documentation of reference, there's a little helpful tutorial here on why you should use references and when, and has some pretty interesting um, other you know stuff to say. But basically what it's saying is that a reference is going to be more lightweight than a node, and that's when you should use them. So someone asked me, um, oh, so cool, I can use references for bullets because I can just add you know thousands and thousands of references onto the scene tree and they'll automatically clean themselves up. I was like, no, you wouldn't do it like that, but you could do bullets with references. Um, I'm not going to show you how, but I'll just say what you would, what I would do is that I would create a, a reference that might be, you know, class name, uh, bullet, and it would have a position and then you would say, okay, well then what good is this to me? Can I add it onto this? Because if I can add it onto the scene tree, well, what we would have is some sort of bullet renderer. And the bullet renderer would have, you know, let's say 20,000 bullet references. And then in one draw job, it would iterate over them and then maybe use a shader to draw a sprite at each one. And so you could have a really, really optimized bullet system. That's the kind of thing you might do. So yeah, just remember that um, references are cool. They clean themselves up, but they can't go on the scene tree. So I hope that tutorial is useful. If you have any questions, um, you can hop on the Discord. It should be in the description. It's a Discord for a game I'm making. Um, I'm pretty active there if you want to ask me any questions about this stuff. So that's it. Thanks for watching.